When my boyfriend got pulled over recently, I just knew that there was a possibility that that could be the last time I ever heard from my boyfriend again. I cried. I remember. And he got into like a fender bender. It wasn't even his fault. I asked him to leave his phone on, si on, on speaker so that I could hear if something happened. Like I was, I was in the corner listening for gunshots. I just knew that there was a possibility that that could be the last time I ever heard from my boyfriend again. And I just kept saying, does the cop seem cool? Does he seem cool? What's, what's his badge number? What's his name? And I was literally phone on speaker in your office, door closed. I didn't want to hear anybody. I didn't want to see anybody. I just needed to hear that he was going to be okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's not fair. I don't have that feeling. If my boyfriend were to get pulled over by a cop, I wouldn't, he wouldn't even call me. He wouldn't, it wouldn't, I wouldn't be worried about it if he did. When there are cops around, I feel safer. Mm -mm. Yeah. It is extremely frustrating to not be able to have these kind of open conversations where it's like, we are, as a community, afraid of the police. Yeah. And because that is not your experience, what we're saying is invalid. Yeah. And it's not fair. And you have to wonder if a whole collection of people are concerned about a group of people that you think are there to protect you, something is up. Yeah. Something has to be up. And even if after having a conversation you still don't believe or feel, at least give us the respect to have those kind of conversations. Yeah. You know? People get defensive because they know it's an issue. Because you know it's an issue. Yeah. You don't want to deal with it. So if you don't want to deal with it, don't speak on it at all. Right. If you don't want to deal with it, that is fine. That is your right. Then shut up. You yeah. got to shut the f up. Yeah. You can't be wrong and strong, as my mom says. Yeah. Wrong and strong. Yeah. Yeah. Coming in with a new hairstyle on Monday is one of my biggest workplace anxieties. Like, if I had like this hair on Friday and I come in with like really long, like, you know, wavy, beautiful Beyonce hair, I spend my entire train ride trying to figure out how I'm going to explain to white people how this happened overnight. <laughs> because for a fact, somebody's gonna go, Tiff, your hair got so long. And it's like, yeah. let me ask you something though. Yeah. As a white person, when you see someone's hair differently, why is it so fascinating for you? So I think it comes from a place of just not knowing and it's like a nervous, it, yeah. it, I, Salon said it best. What she said? Don't touch my hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I went to Tiffany's birthday party. Which was so fun. And I went and I had so much fun, but I was the only white person in your friend group. I just had this feeling of, oh my God, this is what Tiff feels every day. There's, it wasn't bad, it was just like, it was a feeling of like, I'm aware of myself in a way that I'm not. Anytime I danced or even just said something, I was aware of how that was coming out. It, it made me relook at confidence of like, it's, it's a lot harder to be a really confident, strong woman when no one around you looks like you. Yeah. I, I felt myself a little scared to be my full self. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, man, this is how you must feel every day. Every day. Yeah. When Donald Trump was elected, I remember coming in the day after and I was crying and I was so upset because it was the first time that I'd felt like both disrespected and unsafe. I remember going up to you and just kind of being like, caution, how do you feel like on top of everything to be a woman of color as well? I remember people were taking the day off. Yeah. And I was like, what? Yeah, because you were like, I'm, it sucks, but I'm not surprised by this. This is the yeah. world I've been living in, is to Period. not feel safe yeah. or, or respected or to not trust like yeah. white men. And this goes back to something that I appreciate so much about our friendship. You make me realize when the feelings that are in the back of my head are warranted. Yeah, I was really sad and I cried when I woke up in the morning and everybody around me was still like sulking and I, I couldn't relate to that because I didn't think that feeling that way was warranted. Or that you're used to feeling this way all the time that maybe maybe years ago you took a day off but right. now you're like, yeah, I'm used to this, let's right. keep going. That disrespect that you felt, that, that sorrow, that like you couldn't even explain it was how I felt when there was a week recently that like four black men were killed yeah. in two weeks. Yeah. by the police. And I remember coming in the office and I was so sad and so hurt and like, I'm on the edge of tears right now because I had people coming up to me and saying, oh my God, did you know them personally? And it's like, oh, you don't know this feeling. You yeah. know, you don't know the feeling of not knowing them personally, but knowing everything about them. Yeah. You know? And knowing that they look like you. And they, they look like me and yeah. it could be me. It could be my brother that that happened to. So no, I don't know them personally. And yes, I do, you know? Yeah. So that feeling that you can't like, that feeling in your stomach that is just like a sadness that you don't, you're not sure will go away. Yeah. Um, that's how everyone felt when Donald Trump was elected. Yeah. And it was like, welcome. Welcome. Yeah. yeah. By having the safety net of each other, it allows yeah. us to explore each other's worlds in yeah. a way that, 
Yeah. Like you have someone's hand in that world. Exactly. Does you know? <laughs> not come out of my nose just now? No. Okay. I love you. You just want to touch my hair. Oh, she cut me.